Now, remember, I'm going to be walking you through this assignment. I'm going to be showing you how to do each step. I may talk about out some of the answers, but I'm not going to be writing down my, many answers or going through the answer to every question because so part of this is making sure you understand these concepts on your own and that you are able to uh, independently work through this and show me that you can follow these instructions and you can come to these conclusions on your own without my help. So it doesn't do anything for you if I give you all the answers, you won't actually learn anything about sound. So you're gonna have to be doing this on your own. All of this is possible to do on your own without my help as well, okay? So I'm gonna get through this. It's gonna be kind of a tutorial on this assignment. So for starters, the first thing you're going to do is want to click on this Waves intro and open up that link. It's going to take you to the simulation. You're going to want to click on the center one for sound. And you should see this. So following the instructions, it says to tick play tone and particles and then move the amplitude to halfway. Press the green button on the speaker. So over here on the right-hand side, I provided a picture for you. That's what it should look like. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna slide the amplitude to the middle. I'm gonna click play tone and go to particles. So this is what you should see to start. And then I'm gonna hit the green button. So what happens to the particles? All right, you should see that they went from standing still to vibrating back and forth. Uh, I also would recommend that you move, use this pause button frequently because it helps you see things um, at certain points of the video that you might not be able to see in real time. So you, you can see that this wave clumps up in certain spots and it spreads out in other spots. So what happens to the particles? This is a UC question. I'm asking you to tell me what you see. So I'm looking for how you describe those particles to me. So that's how you do the first part. The second part is the amplitude. Move the amplitude slider up and down. So you're gonna wanna do this and whip it up and down a few times and you want to listen for how the sound changes. So as I do this, uh, I know this is playing on my computer. Uh, I'm not sure how it will sound on yours, so I encourage you to stop my presentation here and do that step on your computer and then come back and see what I'm doing next. That way that you can um, kind of inch along with me and you can hear this stuff for yourself. At any point in time, if I'm moving too fast, you can do two things. Pause and go back or Go to the settings and hit slow and replay speed of slow, and then it might slow things down for you. But again, I encourage you to pause this and make sure you have each step uh, completed before listening to the whole thing that I'm doing here. So move the amplitude slider up and down. How does the slide change? So I'm going to click play and move this up and down. You might not be able to tell the difference between the minimum or sorry the medium and the maximum, but the minimum and the max, zero and max are pretty obvious. So you can tell the sound is really low here, really soft, and then really loud up here. That's what you can put down for here. Next, it's asking, how does the motion of the particles change? The motion of the particles, all right, look at how big they're moving. So the distance traveled by each particle is pretty, pretty far. So the particles move back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in these wave patterns. So they're moving, they're being displaced a greater distance when the volume is at maximum and when the amplitude is low,
they're not moving as far. So if you just focus on one, one dot, you can see that the particles are still moving. They're just not moving as far. So they're not being displaced as much. So does the wave pattern change is the next one. So the wave pattern is the pattern that each one makes. So each wave should make a wave-like pattern. So you can see that here, that each one of these compressions where the wave is pressed together forms a wave pattern. So when the amplitude is high, you can see that the, the waves are smashed together tighter in certain sections than when the amplitude is low. So on the right side of the screen here, you can see one wave where it's left over from when the volume, or so I keep saying volume and amplitude and the amplitude was at its maximum. And then on the other side of the screen, you can see where the amplitude was at its minimum. So you can see that they're smashed more together on the right side of the screen than they are on the left side of the screen. So then for this one down here, what you're gonna do is uh, the wave settings show where the particles are light and dark. So you're gonna click waves here. All right, and then you can see that the light sections are where they're bunched together and the dark sections are where they're spread apart. So does the amplitude uh, change the pattern? No, it doesn't, because the amplitude, all it does is it shows you where it's split up. So if you can see where they are split apart, they're just more compressed in some areas. They're more compressed in the high amplitude areas than the low amplitude areas. So for the next part here, the wavelength of sound is the distance between two compressions or two refractions. So use the pause button and the tape. So I'm going to uh, make sure my amplitude's at the maximum, makes it a little bit easier to see. So, it's the distance between two compressions and two ref or two refractions. So I'm gonna hit pause. I'm gonna use the tape that's up in the right corner here and I'm gonna measure. So I'm gonna do from the middle of this white one and I'm gonna drag it to the middle of this other white one here. So I got a hundred point, a hundred and hundred and three. Now this is gonna be a maybe a little bit different for everybody because if I just tweak this just a little bit, then I ended up with a different answer. Um, as long as you're in the ballpark and you're measuring this correctly, you'll see that the distance between each compression and refraction, it doesn't matter, it's the same. So that's what I want you to put here. All right, so for the frequency of wave sounds here, all right, uh, again, pause this and go back if you need to finish anything else. I'm just trying to go through and get this completed so that you have all the information you need. So I'm gonna hit reset here, and then it says click play tone and particles and move the frequency and amplitude to halfway. Press the green button on the speaker. So now you're gonna be doing the same thing, same setup, but you're gonna be adjusting the frequency instead of the amplitude. So this here, play tone, particles, 
All right, green button. So this time it says, how does the sound change if you move the slider? So I'm gonna move the frequency up and down, and up and down. So you should notice a pretty uh, profound difference there. That's uh, pretty easy to hear. How does that sound change? How does the motion of the particles change? So look closely at how they how the particles are moving here. Uh, I would look kind of up close. You can see they're kind of moving uh, in big dips, but they're kind of slow. And when I increase the frequency, those particles start moving faster. And you can see that there's a lot more waves too. So now you're gonna wanna click the waves button. So as you can see, there's a lot more waves. When there's a maximum frequency, there's a lot of waves. When there's a minimum frequency, there's not as many waves. So it says reduce the frequency to minimum. Use the pause and tape to measure the wavelength. Repeat for the maximum frequency. So I'm gonna drop this all the way to the minimum. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna measure, use the tape up in the corner to come down and measure the distance between wavelengths. So the center of one to the center of the next. So this could be my measure, this would be a measurement. And then you increase the frequency to max. You're gonna wanna hit play and let, this, let the waves cycle through. And then do the same thing and measure. So your reading would go there. So your readings go here and they go here. So this should uh, take you through uh, the basics of this lesson is how the amplitude changes a sound wave and how the frequency changes a sound wave. You're gonna use these summary questions to demonstrate what you learned. So how does changing the amplitude affect a wave? Use what you saw up here in your answer. Okay, you might be able to even copy paste your answer from here, combine these two, and then put it down there. But it should be pretty easy to see or from your ear to hear the difference when you change the amplitude of the wave. What happens to the sound? When you change the frequency from low to high, what happens to the sound? That's what I'm looking for here. Did you understand this, the basics of changing the frequency of a wave and changing the amplitude of a wave and how that affects what you're hearing. Because that's how a lot of music today works. That's how a lot of uh, ringtones and uh, sirens work is amp changing these frequencies and amplitudes around to give you the sounds you hear every day. Okay, so that takes us through the end of this assignment. Once you're finished with that, make sure you complete it. Again, if I went too fast for you, uh, make sure you can you can pause this YouTube video, slow it down in the speed settings, and uh, listen to what I have to say at your own pace. And uh, if you have any further questions, reach out to me on Schoology um, and submit this assignment on Schoology when you're done.